I bought this small packet of American white oak recently. Packet 42, right through the middle of my workshop. This is one of my Japanese toolboxes and I thought it might be interesting to have a look at a few of the things that the home gamer DIY type person uh, comes across in Japan when you're shopping at uh, your big home center DIY type store. So ignoring the tools, of course, nothing special in here really, um, but it has a tray in the top and, uh, you know, storage space in the bottom. But I'll show you some of my Japanese tools. So when you think of Japanese tools, I think it's mainly saws, Japanese saws, and planes, I guess. Both Japanese saws and planes are different from their western counterparts in that they cut on the pull. What's really interesting is that in the DIY market, the saws that you, you buy there are no different. Uh, I've got one here, which is a really handy little saw. It's called a razor saw. Huh. Well. I guess someone out there will be able to read that, but that's what it says. Razor saw, 180. Uh, it's 180 millimeter. And this is sold as a disposable saw. I bought this one more than 10 years ago. And uh, it's, um, it is uh, actually broken. Uh, it's got a really thin curved blade. It's probably only about... Um, okay, I can tell you exactly how... Uh, how thick the curve of this blade is. Okay, it's 0.3 of a millimeter. Um, one one hundred and twenty-eighth of an inch really thin and as the name suggests razor sharp when this was new even now after many years it's very sharp and has a removable handle yeah, like that really cool and handy tool this one. This saw here. Fold out saw. Almighty saw, it's called. Uh, that would have been the price. Um, that says top quality product. Um, and these are the uses of it. Cutting tree branches, cutting wood, and cutting fingers. Cool little saw. Uh, to be honest, I don't really use it very often. It's all rusty. I never really used the saw much. I don't even remember where I got it and when I got it. Um, this saw I got recently. This is the shark. Shark saw made in Japan, two hundred and sixty five millimeters. Uh, it has um, ergonomic handle, thicker kerf than the other one, but it's still sharp as a sharp thing with a really good excuse for being sharp. Um, 
you know. This will probably rip half my fingernail off. So these little saws are common at the home centres and the, the DIY shops. The interesting thing about them, of course, as you would expect, being Japanese saws, is that they cut on the pull stroke. This one, I don't know how this is going to do. It's more of a more of a coarser tooth pattern. You can see all the teeth angling back. Let's have a try. Okay. Not very sharp, but it cuts on the pull. So that's just. Uh, and these are the only Japanese saws that I have. Uh, they do me do me fine for everything I need to cut. Oh no, wait, wait, wait. This is my latest one. And this was a gift to me uh, from my sister who lives in Japan. This is my Hello Kitty saw. It's a tiny little craft saw. Yeah, uh, flush trim saw. See the picture? For cutting dowels or flushing other uh, things. Very flexible. It's probably similar thickness to the other one, about a 0.3. Again. Razor sharp and cuts on the pull stroke. Really handy little saw, this one. I really like it. From the point of view, from the perspective of the home gamer DIY guy like myself, if you're not in the market for those high end Japanese saws, or Japanese planes which can cost hundreds of dollars um, you go to your local store and you just get pretty normal stuff um, you know like my little craft saw and shark saw the shark saw was um, given to me by, by my dad uh, the last time he went to Japan to visit my sister so we'll see what he comes back with this time. <laughs>